Hello again, as always, it is me, Inda Melinda Sari from Wonderland Consulting. I have over 10 years experience as a migration agent and was once a migrant myself, which gives me a unique and unique insight into the process. Please like this video or click subscribe to get all the best Australian immigration content and updates. Today, I will be discussing the de facto requirement for the partner visa which is essentially how to get the visa granted uh, without being married. Although the partner visa is often referred to as a spouse visa or marriage visa, it is still possible to obtain the partner visa and permanent residency without actually being married. So if you and your partner have been putting off applying for your partner visa until you get married or you do not intend on getting married whether for the time being or ever then listen up we will show you how to get the partner visa and permanent resident status without being married in this video and how to apply as a de facto couple as a de facto couple applying for a partner visa you are eligible for both the onshore which is the subs class 82, 820 and 801 pathway and the offshore, the subs class 309 and 100 pathway. Note as well that you can use de facto status when applying as a dependent on student visas or for permanent visa as well. Today we are focusing specifically for applying for partner visa. The topics regarding de facto relationship we will be going over today are the best requirements for proving de facto status, length of relationships, cohabitation requirements, and registering your relationship. So let's start with the basic requirements for what a de facto relationship is. The principal eligibility requirements are as a de facto couple, you are not legally married to each other, you are committed to a shared life to the exclusion of all others, your relationship as genuine and continuing. You live together or do not live separately and apart on a permanent basis and you are not related by family. So as you can see, essentially, it is a long-term committed relationship. Remember, obviously, as some with other partner visa, the sponsor must be a citizen, permanent resident or eligible New Zealand citizen. One of the main requirements is the length of the relationship. The standard minimum time a couple will have to have been together to qualify is at least 12 months. If your relationship is or was purely online, then this time will not qualify towards the 12 months. You must meet the 12 months requirement before you lodge the visa, meaning you must wait for the period of 365 days to have passed before you apply. Although online relationship in which you haven't met do not count, it is still possible to count time spent apart after you started your relationship in person as long as you are not living apart permanently and or this happened due to the external circumstances. This could include study, work or visa issues. You must show during this time apart that you remain in close contact and in a committed relationship. Another main requirement is what is called the cohabitation requirement. Essentially, this is the requirement to show that you have lived together in the same household. As with the length of the relationship requirement, there must also be evidence spanning a 12 months period. So how exactly can you evidence that you have been living with your de facto partner for 12 months? There are a number of documents that can be included as evidence of the cohabitation, including property lease or property ownership documents, as long as they have both under your name listed, such as a title deed, rate notice, mortgage documents, or rental agreement. Another type of evidence you can provide are bank documents such as evidence of a joint bank account open as a couple or evidence of transferring of funds between you and your partner. Household bills listing both of you can also be used such as gas, electricity, phone, grocery bills or insurance bills. 
Lastly, you can provide mail and postage or joint invitation sent to shared address and the board of your name. Often we are asked if time spent for traveling will count towards the total period of cohabitation. It can be counted as long as it listed both of your name with the same address. You must not forget that as is with all partner visa applications, the household and cohabitation is only one for four aspects that must be evidenced. The other three being social aspects that you are recognized by friends, and relatives as a couple, financial aspects that you have uh, pulled for your uh, financial resources to some extent, and commitment aspect that you see your relationship as long-term and have made plans for the future. There are ways to get an exemption regarding the 12 months cohabitation period. These being, there is a dependent child of the relationship or you're not permitted by law in your home country to live with your partner, where you have registered your relationship with an Australian state or territory government. This last point on registering the relationship is very interesting as it is something that many people are unaware when it comes to the de facto partner visa application, but can be a great benefit. Be aware that not every state in Australia can register the relationship as a de facto partner. For example, in Western Australia, the department will accept the relationship registration certificate from every other state. And it's interesting to note that the registration process in New South Wales does not require both partners to be present in the state. One partner can be overseas and send over a filled out form as long as the other partner is currently residing in New South Wales. So what is the advantage of registering your relationship? Well, in the case the relationship has already been registered, then you may apply directly for the offshore or onshore partner visa. And it is a very strong bit of evidence to be included in whichever partner visa you are applying for. Well, that's it for today. Be sure to check our playlist of videos all about the partner visa as there is much more important about the application process which you can find there. As you can see, the process can be a very complicated and detailed from inserting your evidence of all four aspects sufficiently, include the extensive doc documentation of everything and finally the application itself. So if you need assistance with your visa issue, whether you just need some advice or want us to organize and submit the application for you, you can find our contact details in the description of this video and in the comments. So feel free to send an email or call with an inquiry and our consultants will be there for all your visa needs. Wonderland Consulting is here to help you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.